the LDL, dropping your LDL too low, what kind of negative effect can that have? And why do you feel like that is being pushed on so many people aside from the obvious with the statin market? Well, when you talk about why low LDL gets promoted and we talk about why low animal protein gets promoted, there's usually an emergent phenomenon, right? And I studied artificial intelligence. I designed you know, highly distributed, high-scale computer networks for a living. And what happens when you take a small rule and you repeat it an infinite number of times, you get what looks like complex behavior. So a lot of the structures of life, like flowers, plants, the way our bodies grow, it looks so complex. It's the same simple, simple rules repeated an infinite number of times, like seashells and lizards, like they're all based on math done over and over and over. Stephen Wolf improved this about 15 years ago. So weird. Complexity emerges from simple rules played infinite numbers of times. Well, with both the pharmaceutical side of things, the low LDL, and with the animal protein side of things, the rule is make money. So you're getting millions and millions of micro decisions made by well-meaning, sometimes, people. People who are willing to say, I know I saw some data that says this LDL thing is something we shouldn't lower, but I'm going to ignore that data because I don't like it. So I'm going to convince myself it doesn't matter and that low LDL is the end all be all. I'm going to convince myself. I had met the head of R&D at Pepsi and the former CEO of Pepsi. And she said, if Pepsi was a country, it would be the 17th largest economy in the world. And Pepsi at the time was entirely vegan, right? because that was her belief system. And so they just threw out all the data that didn't support vegan. And then they fervently believed it was a good thing, right? And I, I mean, I spoke to her and her intent was, how do we lower toxins? Like we're doing our best, but believing something that doesn't work is highly toxic, right? It has to actually work, right? So what I think that, that's one explanation is well-meaning people with profit as a motive instead of something else. The other one is, and sometimes I, I find myself thinking about this, but I can't prove it. If you were to design a system to make humans less fertile and weak and sick, you would do what we did. We have the worst quality lighting. We have the lowest quality seed oils. They're putting fluoride in the water. That is, dude, the Nazis pioneered putting fluoride in water in order to make people more docile because it poisons our thyroids. So if it was just some things were good and some things were bad, but it's almost universally the recommendations are the worst ones you can do. And then there's always functional doctors and others who are saying, this stuff doesn't work. And then they get shouted down and canceled. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, I would have been like, maybe I'm just being, but then I saw the behavior of the world during the pandemic. And the truth has come out. Everyone who got the jab actually has higher risk, higher risk of dying from everything, all cause mortality. That is real. And that is backed by science. And there were thousands of physicians and other people like me who were talking about this during the pandemic, I lost 95% of my reach for two years because I had the audacity to say, as the author of a major book on fertility, my first book, it is a poor idea to inject anything into a pregnant woman, whether it's tested or not, unless it's life-threatening, because there's a lot of stuff we don't yet understand, especially in the first trimester. So let's not stick pregnant women with tested or untested things, mm -hmm. right? And man, they came after me. I got my warning letter uh, from the FTC for one of my things. I got on um, factcheck.org. Now, these are some of my largest career achievements. Right. And hack.org sends you a whole post about why entrepreneur Dave Asprey, who says people make money off the pandemic and explains how that he's wrong. I'm like, you bring it. You bring it, guys. Thank you. But that's not, so I think there are some people who hate humans and they want us to die. I really believe that. And huh? I don't think we should put sociopaths in charge. I really don't. I'm not, it's not a partisan issue. This is an evil Man. issue. Yeah. Call me crazy, but I have to agree with everything that you just said there. It's just, it's craziness. And, and I agree with you. And what I saw, it was some of the most troubling and bothersome things. Thankfully, you know, it, it appears now that there's at least more capability of being a little bit more open and talking about these things. And people are more receptive now to listening. And hey, to each their own, man, if you want to do what you do, do what you do. But I'm just thankful that there's people like you and communities like we have now where we can talk about this and put it out there and conventions like you put on and ways that we can learn from each other and grow. It's, it's 
that's why I'm part of this, man, and why I shifted everything that I'm doing is to be a part of this. So, well, you you're doing something that's going to help you. It's going to help your family. It's going to help all the people who listen because you're willing to evolve. And so am I. Like I've been wrong about things, uh, and I evolve things. And one thing where I've been very very clear for the past 15 years, I've not eaten any seed oils other than if they're in a nut or something. I don't even eat very many nuts anymore and you know, I have some olive oil. Um, but you think with the amount of butter and, and lard from healthy pigs, ones I've raised and beef tallow and all that stuff and, you know, dairy fat, you, I'd have to see an effect. So I just got to clearly scan, you know, what that is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, so this is the gold standard to look at soft plaque in your yes. house. Yes. Right, not calcified plaque. Calcified plaque isn't as dangerous as people think. Like, that's right. stable at least. Well, I didn't have calcified plaque, and I didn't have any diffuse soft plaque at all after 15 years of only eating that stuff and you know, maybe an ounce or two of olive oil most days. Right? So I am the worst case on that. I did have two spots where there was a slight thickening of plaque. Everywhere else is perfectly clean. Mm -hmm. And the explanation for that, according to the imaging people I work with is, oh yeah, you had COVID twice. That's what the spike protein does. Those are just parts of the arteries that are healing right now. And that'll go away over time. So anyone who has soft plaque, it's really not that hard to get rid of it. It's called natto kinase. It's something I recommend all throughout the pandemic because it also digests any foreign proteins, including spiky ones that are in you. You take 4,000 units of natto kinase and lumbro kinase, if you want to be fancy on top of it, and you do that for a couple of years, it'll get rid of most plaque. It's absolutely solvable, but you can't be eating garbage the whole time. Yep. I've been taking 12,000 of natto kinase since I found out I had plaque, and I'm also getting the clearly test done as well, and I've taken courses on it to fully comprehend and understand it. So like you said, gold standard, if you really want to know the true amount of plaque because when people get a calcium score it's only measuring hard plaque and it's still an estimate right it's not it, real evasive or going to give those right numbers so i'm really glad you brought that up because a lot of people aren't aware of that test at all and it's it's the it is the gold standard and it's ai driven it's not some guy or woman reading it that can really kind of read it however the hell they want you know so thanks for bringing that up you're you're welcome it's part of the advanced longevity stuff that i do and I run a, a very, very high end, uh, longevity, biohacking and, and consciousness fulfillment, uh, mastermind, um, that's your know, concierge 24 seven longevity care and all that, uh, for a small group of high net worths along with a couple partners. And this is the kind of stuff that we put them through. And then like, well, most of us aren't going to go to that trouble and it's expensive. So for that part of Upgrade Labs, which is my franchise, we have our testing platform called AXO. You can go to UpgradeLabs.com and, and look at it. And it costs a few hundred bucks. And you can order the hundred plus markers that I have determined for longevity and performance that actually matter. And it includes your LP, little a, and LP, PLA2, the one you talked about, and the things like homocysteine and cortisol and testosterone and thyroid and all the stuff you would need to know with AI interpretation of it. And recommendations, here's the lifestyle, here's the supplements, here's what to do, right? And you can talk to your doctor if you want, but we're not going to diagnose or treat anything. I just want you to live for a very long time and be abundantly healthy. And it turns out none of those are medical conditions. So weird. That's UpgradeLabs.com. I think it's, it's not very expensive anymore. And you can get a longevity age out of that. You can get two of them, actually. So you're telling me you actually test the things we need to test for, not the BS that you get at the doctor's office is what yeah, you do. I, we do measure LDL because it's just about free these days. but People with low LDL die more from all cause mortality, right? The people who are, um, the hundred plus club, you know, the super longevity or super centenarians, we call them, they have more LDL than average, not less and higher LDL later in life is a predictor of longevity and LDL helps your body escort toxins out of the body and be resilient to toxins. LDL is simply not bad for you. Oxidized LDL is bad for you. So what I tell people, if you're still afraid of LDL or anything else, the most important marker of vascular health that you're going to find is LP PLA2. It's an enzyme that's released when anything damages the lining of your arteries. It could be your obsession with kale smoothies where you're getting oxalate in the blood that, that damages your arteries. 
It could be this mythical LDL problem, but it's not. And it could be many other things. But if anything is hurting your arteries, that number goes up. So if your LDL is, oh no, my total cholesterol is 200. Oh, I have to get on drugs. That's just a marketing campaign. Right. And you know what else is a marketing campaign? So I was co-founder of one of the early fitness trackers and I tracked this down. You know where 10,000 steps a day actually came from? No. In 1952, a Japanese company invented the first pedometer that counts your steps. They made up 10,000 as a goal and there was a marketing campaign that swept across Japan in the 1950s. And we've been repeating that crap ever since. Really? The LDL numbers are the same game. The guy's selling you statins. Oh, look, we have a drug that lowers something your body needs to make hormones. Let's just tell everyone that 200, 220, I mean 200, I mean 180, I mean, as low as you can get so we can sell more of these things. It's all bullshit. <laughs> I believe it. I totally yeah. believe it. 